this, my friends, is the PCT. I feel on top of the world. Hello, my name is River, and today I wanted to talk to you about what I put in a first aid kit for through hiking. So I like to keep my first aid kit very, very minimal. Um, and I actually didn't make that many changes to my first aid kit that I took during my time on the PCT in 2018. Um, so my first aid kit looks like this, uh, which is, I guess, probably pretty surprising considering it's six months worth of, I don't know, first aid materials. Um, but I guess I had a few theories um, moving into this. The first one is that when you're through hiking, you're never more than a few days away from a town. So you can still get and top up everything that you need in a chemist, in a like most supermarkets even. Um, and if it's anything really specific, plan ahead, order it to the next town that you'll be needing. Um, and then the other, um, I suppose, theory I had was probably something a little bit more um, <laughs> brutal. And it's that if it only needs a Band-Aid, then you don't need a Band-Aid basically. Um, so yeah, I put together this little um, first aid kit that has been replaced obviously since my last through hike because it got pretty, um, pretty worn down. But I thought I'd go through some of these key things. Um, this is really, really personal to me as well. And um, a lot of the items that I've packed are things that I know that I will probably need um, or have used before or um, things like that. So um, I'm just gonna tip it all out here and pull everything up one by one. Um, Oh, okay. So, firstly, um, you don't need a big red first aid bag. A Ziploc, a nice thick waterproof Ziploc will do. Generally, the freezer uh, Ziplocs are better and um, ideally, I'd like to replace this with one of the half size, the snack sizes. This is more like the sandwich size, um, but it's just what I had. So, um, I've used it. Ziploc's a Ziploc, really. Um, I suppose the first one thing that I'm going to talk about is probably um, what seemed to be the most optional out on the trail, um, and that's a compression bandage. So there's two reasons why I bring this. Um, firstly, yes, sprained ankles are probably quite likely out on the trail. I luckily didn't actually even need to use mine, um, but the main reason I brought this was actually for um, to use it as a compression bandage for snake bites. I understand that this isn't a proper um, snake bite compression bandage, it's much smaller, but um, it's, I suppose, a happy medium. Um, most hikers I know maybe started out with one of these, but generally um, they ditched them along the trail somewhere. It was only myself and funny enough, Australians who kept this item. Um, I think maybe it's because we've come from a country where we're very used to having deadly snakes and this is kind of a non-negotiable when you're hiking out in Australia. Um, but there's still rattlesnakes out there, even though there's one um, one type out there that's really dangerous. Um, most Americans still just didn't seem to prioritize um, the issue. And they also really seem to think that um, not wearing headphones was gonna save you from a rattle a rattle snake bite. Um, I mean, it rattling is a luxury, but it's certainly not um, what you should be relying on. Um, and the biggest thing I noticed out there was Australians always seem to look down at the ground where we we're going and um, Americans and other cultures seem to look sort of around and out. Um, and I suppose that's because they've grown up with bears and all of our deadly animals seem to be the small creepy crawlies in the ground. So we were a lot more switched on. I saw many more snakes than most of the people that I hiked with, mainly because I was always looking down. Most of them weren't dangerous. Um, but yeah, just a little interesting topic um, on observation on having a, some, some form of a compression bandage. You won't see it in many, many first aid kits out there. Um, this here, Luco tape, body tape, sports tape, whatever you want to call it, um, super helpful. And mine's really gross because this is actually the one that I took on the PCT. Um, but I, I use this sort of um, instead of band-aids. Um, I would preventatively tape my heels. Um, I did it every single, like I, I kept my heels just taped for the first three months, knowing that that's a hot spot that I guaranteed will always get a blister every time I ever go out hiking. I've received enough blisters now that um, it's just 
always <laughs> always a spot that um, seems to cop it and this helps a lot so um, yeah Luco tape is fantastic in prevention um, but also yeah if I ever had anything that maybe did need a band-aid no I didn't carry band-aids but I would put Luco tape on it and just make sure that whatever the wound was whether it's a cut or a blister popped or not um, I would just use a little bit of chapstick or lip moisturizer um, and put that on the wound and then stick this over and that way when I pull this off it doesn't um, break the seal of the the wound itself and aggravate it more so a lot of people um, I just carried it like this because it was not a full roll before I started um, a lot of people actually transfer this onto their fracking pole and just like wrap it around um, but this worked just fine for me. I suppose if I was really, really weight conscious, I can get rid of like that little wheel in the middle, but um, yeah, whatever, floats your boat. That was just not worth the effort for me. Um, it was an issue in the cold in the Sierras. I found that because this is like an adhesive, it actually, this whole thing kind of froze solid and it was really, really hard for me to like unpeel things and stick it. And it probably just needs to be replaced now anyway. But um, yeah in the heat it was fine it, it, i could unroll it but it did actually freeze which is interesting um okay so what medications um this is how i i did all of my tablets um and baggies so i guess i'll go through what they all are um so when i mentioned that you're never more than sort of three absolutely maximum five days away from a trail that actually only means that you you need just a few days worth of each medication regardless of what it is because you can replace it as soon as you've had it um so i guess the first one the biggie is ibuprofen um it's just painkillers um i so what i've done i've basically um Put together again a few days worth i've labeled everything so that says ibuprofen um and it says max eight daily um so i've written on there what the dosage is as well um i might actually need to write that on a piece of paper and slip it in because it is already rubbing off um but i've also taken photos of all of the boxes um with all the dosage recommendations and that's always on my phone that comes with me so i can actually go back and look up what i'm taking um but at a snapshot i can see there what I have, what it is, and the dosage amount. Ibuprofen. I'm not sure I understand. Ooh, Siri, thank you. Um, ibuprofen got me through the trail. I was eating this stuff like candy by the end, and um, probably don't recommend. It's not great for you. It's really, um, you have to be really careful that you don't get a stomach ulcer. Always take it with food. I was lucky I didn't, um, and I was like smashing these by the end. So. Yeah, it'll, it'll get you through, it is your friend, but really don't try and make it a habit. Um, okay, what are these? Gastro stop. Okay, so um, what you want is to carry um, basically diarrhea tablets. So if you get in trouble and you end up with like Giardia or um, any waterborne disease, uh, it's pretty likely. I was lucky I didn't get it on the trail, but I am the minority. So um, in that respect, again, I've written what it is. The Australian version is GastroStop. Imodium is another one. Um, I don't know what the brands are in the US. I really packed my first aid kit here in Australia and then took it with me over to the US. So I'm not sure about all the brands over there. Um, but again, um, two liters, uh, two with water, uh, one as needed after that maximum eight a day. So again, I'm just writing basic instructions, um, maximum eight a day. So even like completely dire, that'll get me two or three days, that little baggie there. Um, and it's, yeah, it seems to be the way to do it. Um, something else I took, um, this is Telfast, so antihistamines, one daily. So I've got four days worth here. Um, so this is really if you have an allergic reaction to anything while you're out there, whether it's an insect bite, a sting bite, a sting, a snake bite, whatever, I would be really trying to take antihistamines and um, and get that in me. Um, also hay fever, I don't ever suffer from hay fever. These are just hay fever tablets, but they are gonna help you in the case of an emerging, um, an allergic reaction. And if it is a big enough reaction, I would really consider taking one of these and pressing the helicopter button as well. So um, all of this stuff is a means to an ends. That's it. You really need to be across your first aid, um, even remote or wilderness first aid. Um, and let's face it, if you have a broken leg, a first aid kit isn't gonna help you much. You're not gonna be walking out of there. So that's really when I went to my theory in treating 
um, or creating my first aid kit was really about focusing on what was actually treatable and I could walk out of the situation with. So yeah, antihistamines. Um, and then finally, again, a lot of this is rubbed off, but this is water purification tablets. So this is my backup. I carried a soya squeeze and absolutely loved the device. But if you drop it, if you lose it, if it freezes in the Sierras, you have to make sure you're sleeping with it in your sleeping bag in a Ziploc um, in cold areas. If you freeze it, it cracks the filter inside and un unfiltered water can get through. You might not even know it's happening. It, it never looks broken. Um, but yeah, so that's when you want to be carrying two to three days worth of water purification tablets. Sure enough, you can borrow other people's water filters and, and water filter all your water and carry it filtered. Um, but if you're hiking completely alone and don't have that option of people willing to share, then this is your backup and believe me, carrying that many, <laughs> this little baggie here, um, what's that gonna be, like 10 grams? Um, that beats getting any kind of gastro bug from water. So it's definitely worth it. And again, I carried one of something similar the whole way on my pass through hike. Didn't end up needing it, but it's just peace of mind. So really good thing to have. Um, okay, so creams. Um, I carried an um, anti antibacterial cream. This one here that I've got is also um, like a, oh, I can't, don't know how to pronounce it, but basically, um, anti-inflammatory mixed in with it. So if you're having like maybe like a rash or um, a skin irritation, this is what you want. And it's also really important for foot care just to make sure that if you're getting anything that is like tinea or um, you know anything, the basic starts of foot rot, you really need to make sure you're taking care of your feet. And this is probably the best way to do it. Same with any sweat rashes anywhere. Um, it's it's a really useful thing to have. Um, and again, look at the tube size. This here is 15 grams. That's how much, like it probably weighs a little bit more. Um, uh, yeah, it probably maybe weighs like 17 grams or something by the time you count the lid and stuff like that. But it's the lightest one you can get. You can get some that are like 20 grams, 25, and they're a little bit bigger. Um, but same with your toothpaste, opt for really small um, tubes. And considering you're probably not gonna use the full thing in you know a sitting anyway. So uh, yeah, antibacterial cream. Um, oh, sorry, anti inflam antifungal cream and this is antibacterial cream so again um, it's a no-name brand but it's 10 10 grams um, this one so I, that's why I got the no name um, but yeah so if you're getting cuts if you've got open blisters things like that you really need to make sure you were disinfecting any open wounds because an infection out there on the trail that's something that can get really really bad in a matter of three days before you get to town to get anything properly flushed or or, or whatever the trail is a really unhygienic place. You have dirt everywhere. You're not bathing properly. You're not regularly washing your hands and certainly not ever using soap. Um, I had hand sanitizer with me um, and I would basically only use that after pooing. That's it. And then all the other times I ever washed my hands, it was just with water if I washed my hands. You get pretty accustomed to your own filth out there, um, but it is really important to, to be treating any wounds properly with something like this. Um, if you're really hardcore, really extreme, I guess you could probably use hand sanitizer in any open wounds, but that sounds awful. Um, so yeah, I'd really recommend using this. Um, okay, so for females, um, I carried two emergency tampons just in case. Um, I generally carried them um, I only carried what I knew I would be needing. Um, and really, I basically lost my period out there anyway due to over-exercise, so I didn't really have to worry too much about it. But um, if you get really stuck, you wanna be able to have your own resources before you can find someone and ask to borrow theirs, um, tampons, I mean, um, or I don't know, figure out another means. Um, but yeah, doesn't weigh much, doesn't take up a whole lot of space, but it, it's a nice to have, that's for sure. Um, I also packed Ural um, all my life. Urinary tract infections is something that I have been prone to. Um, so I carried two packets. That's probably only really a day's worth if I get sick. Um, and out in the PCT, I did get a really bad urine infection. Um, I actually had it for five days and ended up on antibiotics. Um, but um, yeah, this at least offered me a little bit of a head start to try and get it un under control for the first day. Unfortunately, I couldn't. I was just too dehydrated to be able to keep ahead. Um, but 
it's it offered me temporary relief at least and this I would not recommend for everyone to take but this is what I mean by pack a first aid kit that suits you you know what you are prone to and what is usually an issue when you go hiking or if you get dehydrated or if you um, you know really push your body and for me urinary tract infections and carrying ural was the the option and I'm glad I did um, in saying that as well, yes, I did carry a tampon. You never know what, uh, not a tampon, a condom. You never know like what's gonna happen out there. We're all humans, whether it's in town or on the trail, whatever, I'm not going into it. But the point is, if you are in a situation where you need one of these and you don't have one of these, um, that's not healthy. So I count this as a first aid kit item, handy. Um, okay, and then the last two things I have, they're kind of like miscellaneous. Um, firstly, my my knife, it's only little. Um, I wouldn't say that I had this for protection. I certainly didn't keep it anywhere. Um, oh, I can't even open it right now. It's like jammed. There it is. Um, yeah, only little. Um, but yeah, so I mainly just carried this in my first aid kit so I could cut the tape here and it was just um, a convenient place to put it where I knew that it wouldn't get lost. Um, weighs about 30 grams, not a bad little thing. Um, and then probably the most important thing, and I used this a lot, was a little, um, a little sewing kit. I didn't start with one of these, um, but I just kept having to borrow needles to lance blisters and stuff and everyone kind of gets a bit grossed out sharing needles to pop blisters with which is fair enough um so i ended up picking one up one of these in a town i ended up doing a lot of sewing repairs of my gear as well for shirts shoes shorts um things on packs it's it's a very handy piece to have um for something that's so light but also for treatment of blisters so if you have a raised blister I, I had plenty and I, I tried all different methods and um, I finally settled in lancing and that solved everything. So lancing is actually where you take a piece of thread, you thread up your needle um, and you basically put it through one side of the blister and out the other and then you cut the piece of um, cotton on each end. So you end up with a piece of cotton maybe that long um, that sits in a blister. Leave it there for days. The point is that that helps that blister to drain. Um, yes, you need to be sterilizing your needle before you do that. Hand sanitizer will work, flame will work, um, or even that antiseptic um, anti cream that I was holding up prior. Um, but that seemed to be the most manageable way to remove the pain from the blisters. It was what I could find the most hygienic way considering you're gonna be popping them anyway. Um, just make sure it's cotton thread that you're using. Um, but yeah, that was a game changer. That really um, turned around my foot care. So that's um, that's it. That's everything I carry um, along, along with, I probably should have brought some out. Um, I bring a chapstick for my lips um, and also I always carry sun cream. I can't say I used it the whole time, um, but on really hot burny days, I certainly did. And on my face is probably where I used it the most. The rest of my skin kind of just got used to the sun, not that that's healthy. Um, but it's true. So yeah, that's my first aid kit. Let me know if there's anything else that you do. Pop it in the comments. Thank you so much for following and supporting my videos um, and make sure you go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button to support my channel. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye bye.